Eyes up, Guardian. It's time to talk Destiny 2 The Witch Queen here on and Cool. It's about to get effing cool. Hello, everyone, and welcome to effing cool. So today we're going to talk about Destiny 2, The Witch Queen. But before we jump into that, my name is Zach. I am one of the admins here at effing cool. And with me today is staff writer Lee. Lee, tell the good folks a little bit about yourself. Well, uh, first of all, just to, uh, what's the word? Disappoint, you know, for a second. I am a Titan main. Thank you very much. <laughs> so what's your favorite flavor of crayon? Uh, fire. Spicy crayons. <laughs> I don't know. There's something about throwing hammers that just seems so appealing. Anyway. <laughs> but, um, yeah. So I got my start in with the uh, Power Rangers community. Then I kind of jumped into Destiny. I've done uh, bits with um, Guardians of Lore, and then we've also got uh, uh, Destiny Audio File. I apologize, my brain is not working. Um, Guardians of Lore, which is a uh, lore based podcast, and Destiny Audio File, which is kind of like a audiobook reading of Destiny lore books. And so, uh, if you want to check those out, so between that and then doing uh, a few Destiny shanties, which I kind of need to get into, that's kind of where i'm based in the destiny community right now very awesome very awesome um so yeah uh, how did you get your start here with effing cool uh with effing cool uh pretty much as soon as i saw a uh reach out basically saying hey we're looking for writers i said i want to try that and uh i've done a little bit uh back when i did my stint with the power rangers community so i figured i'd start trying my hand at writing articles again which uh i've got one under my belt with a few more on the way hopefully you guys like them Awesome. Well, we're super glad to have you aboard. Uh, but today, though, it's all about Destiny 2, the Witch Queen expansion. Uh, I know you and I were both very hyped for this when it oh, uh, yes. was announced. And as the release drew closer, we said we're, we had to do something to talk about yeah, Destiny 2. I mean, 2. this is we're getting into what, like seven, uh, seven ish years of uh lore and yeah. maybe the past four have had something to do with uh, Savathun herself. So, this is like this is a big deal. It's massive, and I did want to talk uh, very briefly about what has kind of led us to uh, the Witch Queen and this season, the season of the Risen. Um, of course, last season we uh, we had it revealed to us that a uh, good friend of the Vanguard, Osiris, uh, one of Ikora Ray's mentors, had been taken over by Savathun. And was basically given free reign in the tower, um, where she got to learn all of our dirty little guardian secrets. Ooh, yes, and that laundry. It was it was rough, and um, we uh, you know got a little help from Queen of the Awoken, Queen Marasov, trapped Savathun inside the crystal in her um, hidden uh, uh, base there on uh, the Dreaming City. And throughout the season, we did missions to expel Savathun's hive worm parasite from her body, uh, which led to the events of the Witch Queen. Um, so let's got, go ahead and we talk a, a little bit about We did. We, we were very <laughs> sneaky, which is fun because we pulled the fast one on the Queen of Lies. Um, so, Lee, let me ask you real quick. Witch Queen story. What were some of the highlights for you? What, as you were playing through, made you go, "Oh man, that's super cool! I love that they included that in the lore." Specifically, the hive, the uh, the Lucent Hive, the Hive Guardians. Just the take of say, not since Gaul have we really dealt with anyone besides uh, the Guardians of the Last City having light and like pr like utilizing it. So, being able to see other species that weren't I, I guess weren't risen by the traveler's ghosts to, well, we'll get into that detail later, but <laughs> <laughs> seeing what we haven't seen before with these hive knights, wizards and acolytes, just using 
our supers against us in a actually rather stylish manner, I must say. <laughs> um, right? Like, I want some of those very I'm like, supers who that shields? Using. I, because... <laughs> I started out as a uh, as a sentinel in D2. So being able to see that Captain America shield and seeing this guy use two of them, I'm like, where's mine? <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I'm, a, I'm a warlock main myself, and um, the wizards being able to cast down multiple bolts of lightning was really cool to see for the first time. Oh, it was crazy. And we've since we've never actually, besides in uh, the Crucible or uh, Gambit, have we really been able to fight other light bearers and to see how that plays out and how uh easy or difficult that may be given the situation it, it creates a whole new ball game yeah it really does i mean i remember the so in the story mode um you know you start out and you are on mars where you're catapulted onto savathun's ship where you encounter a hive guardian for the first time and when that happened it was a very oh crap moment where suddenly you have this character who you kill and they leave behind a ghost and your ghost has a slight um, existential crisis where he's yes. just like, uh, um, what? That can't be right. That's why, why do they have like a ghost? Me? Why does that thing look like, you know, that's not me, right? Like, I'm not like that. Like what's going on here. And the voice acting from Nolan North on that um, was great the because it was the right amount of like panic but also this seasons his best yet. And it's, it's great. And, and I just, all the voice acting, first of all, is, is top notch for, for this game. Uh, Bungie really knows how to cast their talent. Um, but yeah, the story of, of just like dealing with these loosened hive, dealing with hive guardians, you know, someone who can match us in a uh, threat level, you know, I'm playing with my friends and we're doing missions and it's like, okay, watch out that, you know, that, that guy has a super, we got to back up, hide behind cover. It, it adds an element of actual danger to the gameplay. It does. And um, being able to access the legendary, a legendary difficulty in this, rather than, you know, having to go out and switch light levels, all that sorts of stuff, being able to actually have a consistent legendary mode from the jump was, I mean, it, I never really had to think tactically in campaign until now. And when you play with a fire team, they ramp that up to 11. Mm -hmm. And it's it's just it gives you the right level of difficult at the same time. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, I know that uh, for me as a solo player, um, I was like, you know, I, I think I've been playing Destiny since Destiny one alpha. I think I can handle legendary mode. I got <laughs> to like the third or fourth mission, the one where you're actually inside the pyramid ship on Mars. Right. And that's where I had to call it. I was like, this is just too difficult. This boss is hammering me into the ground repeatedly. I'm not tough enough to hang. This is too dangerous. I'm going to, I'm going to scale it back down to normal difficulty. Yeah. Um, and it was at that point where I was like, okay, yeah, things are better now. It's still challenging, but it's not beat your head against the wall challenging. Like it was for me with legendary mode. But by that point, I mean, I had gathered enough, uh, engrams of powerful, armor and weapons to be uh i think i was light level 15 15 at that point right i was like i'm five off from soft cap and half this game is the grind for gear anyway i think i'm good just completing it through normal mode now i don't need to go legendary anymore because i don't really care about that like when you do complete the legendary mode you get that cool exclusive emblem and it is one of the things you need to get one of the uh seasonal titles uh for this which right. expansion and it's like, I don't, I don't know if I really care about any of that. So I'm just going to back off to normal and play at my own pace and not have to have a stress out about, oh, that guy had his super eight times in a row and I'm just mush in the ground now. And it, it, it I, I will tell you that uh, on Legendary, it gets worse. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Well, and it scales, too. Like, if you're playing by yourself on Legendary, it's hard. If you're playing with friends on Legendary, it's even harder. Because now they're like, <laughs> yes. oh, you brought friends along to try and make it easier? No, joke's on you. We're going to add know. in three times the amount of enemies. Also, three times the amount of health. Good luck. And, Which, and it, like you said, it does require a lot of tactical strategy. And it's like they're, as each each season and each story expansion that they do you see a lot of uh they're really kind of uh embracing that whole mmo thing that they 
originally were like, yeah, no, we're we're not really an MMO. And now they're like, yeah, we're uh, we're really embracing that. So and one of that thing is instance based difficulty. So mm -hmm. you have more people at a higher level. The system says, OK, we need to throw more at you. And they seem to do that rather uh, seamlessly. For sure. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about the story. Um, obviously, we go in, we learn that Savathun has the light. Um, she's empowering her Lucent Hive brood with light powers. Um, and as always, we have to go in and wreck shop to save the world. Um, That's what we do best. Exactly. We're guardians. That's what we do. <laughs> um, we meet some really cool people along the way, um, including a new friendly hive ghost named Finch, um, who we will talk about a little bit more uh, coming up, uh, who I just, I thought he was awesome. So, um, Worky. Then the story leads us through uh, learning all about what happened to Savathun in between the time we last saw her leaving Marasov's palace and when we saw her at the beginning of Witch Queen. Uh, come to find out, she died. She was miles from the last city, exasperated, out of breath, collapses, and the Traveler grants her a ghost. And like, it is boom. such a rug pull moment. Yeah, you're right. It is such... <laughs> because all this time, we're under the impression Savathun stole the light. Somehow she stole the light. This is this is a trick, and she's evil, and she's wrong, and we're going to fight this, and we're going to be the heroes. Come to find out, not really. Traveler really? said, hey, um, here you go. You know, you're, you're, you're light-powered now. I kind of feel bad for you, so... Yeah, and, and just such a rug pull moment. But I think that, you know... It, my friend, my buddy Steve came up with this theory, and I kind of like it. He had the idea that the Traveler did that because he realizes that the darkness situation is an all-hands-on-deck. Mm -hmm. Having the Hive powered by light is a powerful tool against the darkness. Right, Having because the Hive are like, they're just a massive, nearly endless force. Just And that was before the light was given to them. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And so the traveler in this state of like, okay, the darkness is coming again. I want to, I want to run as much as I want to fight, but I can't run again. I'm too weak. Okay. We're going to, we're going to just empower the hive and um, hope that things work out. And so that whole aspect of the story, I think was really unique and um, really it, it, surprisingly in the end, I felt bad for Savathun because she had been deceived by the entities, the old worm gods, who had said, hey, uh, you know, the, the Traveler's bad. We should fight the Traveler. And, you know, she was <laughs> deceived by her, these entities that said, no, no, you're not going to find refuge in the light. You're going to find refuge in the darkness. You're going to find it's refuge in the It's like that scene from uh, Zoolander where Mugat uh, Mugatu sits there and he's like, oh, well, the... The prime minister of Malaysia is bad. We need child labor laws. <laughs> child labor laws are bad. So that it, that's what the what it gave me. Of course, in a more serious manner. But it's like traveler bad, darkness good. You need to use the darkness. <laughs> Feed us. We hunger. Yeah, and so that was. I mean, kind of a kind of a brief summary of the story. There is a lot more story to go into, but I want to, you know, let some people, uh, you know find out more on their own um lee was there anything in the story you didn't particularly care too much for anything that kind of rubbed you the wrong way anything relating to and consisting of the scorned i when they were introduced in forsaken i mean i was like okay this is a whole new fallen subtech subclass it's fine and then the uh i forget what they're called i'm sorry i'm doing crabby hands but uh the uh the screebs there we go the screebs probably the most infuriating thing ever created and then we have an entire mission dealing with hunting down scorned in the dark with little flashlights and everything and doing this mission on legendary with an entire fire team we took nearly half a week just trying to figure out just trying to get it done because it was horrible. Yeah. Um, 
I can I can agree with that. I think that the scorn feel a lot of place in the story. Um, I think that they just needed another enemy that we haven't befriended at this point. Because in all honesty, we've allied ourselves with the Elixni. We've allied ourselves with the Cabal. The Cabal. We're and running out of enemies. Like in the Hive, or I, I guess the Hive are currently that's kind of a um, gray area right now after dealing with Savathun. Of course, there's still Zivu Arath that's, uh, that we've got to deal with, so that's probably coming later. Oh, yeah. Which, um, so that's pretty much all of the enemies, well, besides the Taken, that were introduced in D1. Yeah. I, I think, to me, it would have had more sense to have the Taken be a part of this as something of a, like, you know, you have that sibling rivalry between Savathun and Right. Or, Rather than having you... the, uh, the um scorned the taken probably would have been a better fit because they they fit the context between with the war between savathun and zivu Arath. and as unless i missed something there was nothing explaining specifically how or why the scorned were there yeah i'm trying to rack my brain right now to remember that far back at the beginning of the story but no they just it seemed like, hey, hey, we need an enemy. Who do we plop in this world? Uh, I don't know, Scorn? Like, I, I don't remember any specific story reasons that they were there. Copy-paste so. Screebs everywhere. Screebs, listen, man. Those Screebs... <sighs> I have never learned so fast to jump backward while shooting because I yes. don't want to get caught in the explosion. <laughs> um, but yeah, you're right. In, in the one mission where you have to take on the Scorn Baron that's there for some reason. Yes. And you're crawling around in the dark of the maze and all of a sudden you turn a corner and hey, there's 10 screams in your face. You're going around this li nice little uh, circular area because you're, you're supposed to get uh, Sigir Sigiris shell at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. since, since, I mean, uh, spoiler alert, I, which we'll cover. And it's a, it's a spoiler have, cast. Yeah, I mean, we're going to talk spoilers. <laughs> We've already spoiled the main story. So at this point. Oh, yes. Everything's everything's open, uh, and so there are like the three rooms. You go into the room as soon as you break the crystal. All of a sudden, boom! Big pop of scorn right there in your face, and I, mm -hmm. I don't have words. Yeah, that that mission was tough. It took me and my buddy doing it. We were doing it on legendary, and it took us like four or five tries to get it right because <laughs> it was just such a challenge. Um, but moving on a little bit from uh, the story now, uh, I did want to talk about the actual throne world sandbox, the new area where we are running our patrols, running our bounties, uh, talking to Finch. Um, what aspects of that do you think were really uh, fun? What, what did you think about the throne world? Savathun's castle alone is the most glorious piece of architecture I have ever seen in a video game. Just how expansive it is. I mean, it's as far as I'm aware, because... Uh, playing on PC, I didn't really see any any big like loading walls or anything like that. So I figured this is one big ginormous area, and we're not even talking about the the wilds and everything outside. Mm -hmm. Going in, and I don't even know if Europa was this large with the um, with everything uh, relating to Clo the Clovis uh, Bray Tech and everything. It is just expansive, and it took maybe upwards of an you know an hour two hours just exploring the entire thing outside of a mission and so yeah that's, I, oh, I yeah i i agree um the throne world is fantastic the architecture <laughs> one gripe about the architecture is anytime i go to try to jump to to grab onto the ledge to pull myself and up and doesn't. those spikes just yeah no nope, there's spikes <laughs> on that wall you can't you can't do that no i don't um, want to prick my finger but yeah, you're right. The, the 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 throne world itself is fairly massive, and yeah, I played on PS5 myself, and no noticeable load lag, no quicksand like there was on the PS4 with some oh. strikes and things like that. Um, and you know, being able to to have that dichotomy of here you have this pristine, glowing white hive throne world castle. Um, with the sort of backdrop of this gross, muddy, green, brown swamp land. Um, Which is kind of interesting because I, seeing this uh, duality in a throne world, because uh, I, 
I honestly don't know if we saw much of Oryx's throne world besides uh, what was it? Shatter the Shattered Throne mission, or was I, I think so? Or was I mean, that Mar no? Mara had a throne world of her own due right. to dealings with Oryx. So we don't. I guess we don't really have much to compare it to. But this is probably seeing the visual duality of I am embracing the darkness. I mean, embracing the light and expelling the darkness. It's I it's almost poetic. Yeah, that I can absolutely get behind that. And I think the interesting thing is, you know, you have this sort of great war going on. Uh, granted, we didn't much care for the fact that the scorner in the game yeah. uh, or in these missions, um, but you have this great war going on where the hive are trying to fight off the scorn that are at the gates. And you have these random public, I wouldn't call them public events because they're not like you can't queue up for it. You can't, you know, hit the, the, the flag on them, but they just happen randomly where you have these battles that happen with these like, hive that just get stronger and these scorn that just get stronger. And it's like, I'm going to stay away from that because they will all one shot me. Yeah. So that it's like, um, um, in, uh, the early days where the, you'd have an instance where it says the enemy is moving against each other. Yeah, exactly. And so that's exactly what this was. And it's, it's nice to just sit back and watch. Oh yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe throw a grenade or two down there on occasion and just watch the chaos. Yeah. Unfold. Go get them. Go get them. Hey, he threw that. <laughs> <laughs> um so let's gaze on uh our newest friend in uh destiny 2 finch the hive ghost who decided to rebel against the hive and refuses <laughs> refuses just, to res his guardian oh yeah he just just leaves him there yeah he's he's yeah he's kind of dead but uh what of it that that line he has, or he's like, "Oh, don't worry about that pile of bones behind me." Yeah, that's just the hive knight I'm supposed to res, but I'm leaving him dead. <laughs> he's like, "Yeah, don't." He, he's had a hard time, you know, with the whole dying <laughs> thing. <laughs> um, yeah, Finch is great. He's he's got that right amount of like, he's kind of sarcastic, but he's not like malicious in his sarcasticness. He's just kind of like he's kind of tw he's twitchy in that way that you just you you can't 100% put your faith in him because he's just like, yeah, 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 yeah. That, that, that's totally good. That it's, it's fine. It, I'm telling the truth. Totally. And mm. you're like, I don't believe you. And he ends up telling the truth anyway. So yeah, he seems like he's shady, but he's actually genuinely telling the truth. Yeah. He wants to work with the Vanguard at one point, in one of the missions um, it's, it's Finch and our ghost talking and I Ray butts in and he's just like, Oh my God, is that, is that a Ray? Like, Oh my gosh, I'm so honored. Like, I've always wanted to work for the Vanguard. And she's like, well, uh, let's slow the roll there, Chief. Like, if your <laughs> intel is good, we can talk about you working with the Vanguard, not for the Vanguard. Um, so, yeah, their whole interaction was fun. And you mentioned that the voice actor for, uh, for yes. Finch. Ian James Corlett, which uh, a lot of folks, I mean, maybe around our age, he might seem familiar. Um, back in... Uh, the early the mid 90s he was the voice of cheetor in uh beast wars which so i had no clue and you yeah. mentioned that in our chat as we were prepping for this and i was like that's where i know that voice <laughs> from you're right and it is so cheetor he was cheetor he did uh he was an early voice for he was the voice of uh goku before um uh i apologize i forget his name but anyway the current voice of goku he was the voice before him hmm. and um, for the sake of my daughter, I, this was how I learned he was the voice of uh, Mr. Conductor in Dinosaur Train. Uh -huh, okay. And so that one kind of threw me for a loop. <laughs> um, and I mean, he's not, this isn't the only current thing he's doing either, because um, remember uh, our dearly, dearly departed friend who was the original voice of Moroku in Inuyasha? Um, he passed away due to COPD. And hey, hello there. Uh, just, I apologize for interrupting your podcast. Uh, wanted to make a quick correction. Uh, we were talking about Finch, the voice actor for Finch, Ian James Corlett. Uh, he replaced the voice actor for Moroku in uh, Yashihime. That would have been Kirby Morrow. I said that he passed away due to COPD, which was incorrect. Uh, he actually passed away from a long history of alcoholism. Uh, I do apologize. And also wanted to make mention that if you or anyone else happens to be... Uh, suffering from alcoholism or any other form of addiction, uh, please seek help and communicate uh, back, 
both parties. Uh, we love you, and we just want to see you get better. Uh, with that, I will let you get back to your podcast. Thank you. Enjoy. He, uh, Ian James Corlett is now the new voice of Moroku for uh, Yashihime. Hmm. So it's so he. I mean, Destiny's just one of a slew of things he's doing. So he's 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 current. I promise. Yeah. <laughs> um, we're gonna we're gonna jump just ahead a little bit to speaking of ghosts and voices. Um, one of the new voices that we get to hear when we're running patrol missions on the Throne World is the voice of Imaru, uh, <laughs> who is Savathun's personal ghost. And there is a lot of mystery involved with Amaru because no one can seem to figure out who is voicing him. No, I've it's uh can't find any information, like no IMDBs, Reddit's got a boatload of theories. Yeah. And and like everyone's like, well, well just look in the game credits. Well we'd love to, but they removed the game credits. We can't see who yeah. is voicing who. <laughs> um and I think the prevailing theory is you know, one of two schools of thought, it's either Robin Atkin Downs, who was the voice of Spider, which I can hear. I think there are certain moments where he does sound like Spider. Yeah. Um, and then uh, either that or it is Fred Tattashore, who um, is the voice of Zur. And honestly, to me, it definitely sounds more like Fred Tattashore than Robin Atkin Downs. I can kind of, uh, I could see where they're coming from with Robin because he has that kind of like smoky sort of voice mm -hmm. like Robin does. And especially when he says neon nerds, <laughs> which is my favorite new insult. I love it so much. <laughs> I want to get that on a t-shirt. I'm a neon nerd. <laughs> <laughs> and I just, I, I hear that. And uh, I'm just like, yeah, that I can, I can kind of see where they're coming from. Cause he, he does have that smoky spider sound mm -hmm. and Fred Tattashore is a little gruff and growly. So, yeah, it, to me, know. it sounds like Fred Tedisher doing his um, Soldier 76 voice, but just slightly less gruff applied. Okay. Um, now, now, now I get it. Okay. <laughs> now you yeah. can hear it? <laughs> yeah, now it yeah, clicks. Yeah. <laughs> um, so last thing we're going to talk about the throne world is secrets, the fun hidden things that have been popping up uh, mm -hmm. the, the last week and a half or so. Um, the little Lucent Moth figurines that yeah. are appearing two per week, um, which are going to be, I guess, filling up the cave behind uh, Finch. Yeah, they're the new um, bunnies and uh, penguins, mm -hmm. essentially, I believe. And uh, there's one I'm I'm sort of caught up there. I'm actually I've got three and the fourth one seems to be in an area that I can't either can't get to or I don't know. I haven't quite looked mm. at it yet, so I have to figure out the path to get these two for this week because I do have the first two, um, mm -hmm. but I haven't yet played enough this week to to hunt down. Because I feel like every time I get on to Destiny 2 these days, I get on to play with my friends, which right. is great because there was a long hiatus there where none of my friends played Destiny <laughs> 2 anymore. And it was just me going through, doing my weeklies, doing my dailies. It's like, okay, well, that's just me playing. Um, but now that I've got my friends back involved with it and they're having a ton of fun and, and we're all playing <laughs> together... It's like, yeah, okay, cool. I, I can I can farm my stuff another time. We'll we'll hang out and play. We'll run, you know, uh Dares of Eternity or whatever. Three um, Laters later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Many Laters later. <laughs> uh we're gonna move on to the gameplay now. We're gonna talk about some brand new mechanics that came in with the Witch Queen, and that is Void 3.0. Ooh. I know yeah. you're a Titan main. How are you liking uh Titan Void? changes being able to because i mean there actually i will admit i didn't find out until last season that you could actually have both your your uh titan bulwark and a uh bubble mm -hmm. so uh i'm i'm a bad titan because i i did not know that until recently but you can actually being able to sculpt around those features as you will it's it's great because that's one of the things I loved about um, uh, brain stasis. There we go. To be being able to sculpt how you work your melee grenade, all that stuff. And then being able to use the hunter grenade, because basically I'm guessing what they're doing is allowing you the full slate pretty much. Mm -hmm. 
and um, hunters have great grenades. Oh yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's no secret that Bungie loves the hunters. The hunters yes. and everything. Yes. Um, this is this is of course coming from a warlock main and a titan main. We hate <laughs> the hunters. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I I really, you know, I, I hopped onto my titan and was messing around with that, and there is a great PVE build right now for titans that is just explosions. Everything explodes. Nothing but explosions all the time. And being able to clear out a room of ads by throwing a grenade, chaining explosions, and then using um, one of this season's uh, seasonal uh, armor mods is one called the Volatile Flow, which anytime you deal damage with your void uh, weapons while your void subclass, it causes your targets to become volatile and they explode on kills. And volatile is so much fun. It's so good. I love it so much. <laughs> I was like, thank God I saved on to my gnawing hunger because that thing just rapidly. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. It's so I'm much fun just watching right a whole room explode. It's so good. And I mean, you use that for, for causing explosions. Awesome. Um, and I, I just love to see, you know, it, it's that it's that feeling of power that I love yes. with this game. I love feeling powerful in this game. So to step up and just be like, all right, uh, 20 bad guys, two grenades, because I rock armamentarium for that extra grenade charge. Um, yeah. <laughs> and just like, it, it's like 4th of July every time I step into a room of bad guys. That's why I love it so much. And it is absolutely amazing. Um, but that yeah, Titan, Titan PVE build... I think it's called like maximum demolition or something like that. It's so much fun. I'll have to look uh, it up. I'll, I'll have to send you the link. I found it on a website where I was like, Ooh, this sounds interesting. I'm gonna try Ooh, this piece of candy. Yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> Warlock void, uh, similar thing. Um, controverse holds with the grenade is really good. Um, and again, just use that volatile flow armor mod and explosions, explosions. Um, not as many as the Titan, because with the Titan, you also get explosions when you're throwing your shield for your ranged melee. Yes. Um, which is fantastic. Um, and then I don't play Hunter, so I don't... I mean, I have a Hunter. I just <laughs> haven't played him yet and, like, leveled him up and messed with his stats. Yeah, we're he, he's kind of collecting dust right now, so... Uh... I mean, mine's collected dust since before Beyond Light, so... <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, Void 3.0, I really like it. And if it's an indication of how the rest of these subclass changes are going to come throughout the year, I'm here for it. I'm excited. Um, I can't wait to see how I can better use, um, my, uh, arc turret buddy with my warlock. Yes. Uh, because when I'm warlock, I'm usually arc main and I have getaway artist as my exotic uh, gloves to summon a powerful arc turret buddy that lasts quite a while. So something where it's like, oh, your arc turret, you know, uh, deals increased damage as an aspect or, or whatever. Like, yeah, I want to do that. I want to have a cool supercharged arc buddy. Oh, heck yeah. And then, um, uh, I mean, what if, because, uh, like, you already have one. What if there's an option to have two or, you know? There is, there is a build with um i forget which exotic it oh i think it's uh it's um no time to explain where yes. you can have your no time to explain uh time dilation buddy and your arc buddy and you're basically your one-man fire team thank you and it's like that's cool let's, let's do that and with it with no time to explain being a uh it's an exotic now right mm -hmm. yeah it's a, it's so, a yeah, primary exotic being a, an exotic so it's it's never really going to go out of style unless Bungie decides, oh yeah, we're going to do away with this. So, yeah. I mean, hey, bring it. I forward. think they said they, they're they're putting the kibosh on on sunsetting weapons for the future. Like, they're, yeah, they're, they, that was an experiment that they realized. Oh no, this backfired. Everyone hates it. We're not going to do this ever again. Yeah, when they they um, did it after they brought Saint back. So, uh, my uh, my steel feather repeater is uh, no more. Oh. <sighs> All right. Um, so speaking of new things, we got some new activities to talk about. New seasonal activities. Um, the first one being psyops. Uh, Lee, what do you think about psyops? Psyops being it, having as the first uh, new piece of seasonal content for the year. It's they're starting out strong with this, uh, whereas you know they're focusing on Hive with the main story. They actually have a with essentially they're making this sort of like a B plot rather than 
oh, well, there's also this. No, this is just as important as the main story. And I love that. And to yeah. they're building on the the battlegrounds stuff that they had from last season, and it it works. Yeah, uh, I really dig it. Um, and like you mentioned, when they kind of introduced it as a sort of subplot to the main story, uh, I was like, oh wow, that's that's really that's a good way to do it because that's going to entice more people to you know keep playing it. Um, and I love the concept of it. I think it's super fun to be like, okay, we're going to capture a hive lieutenant and. Empress Keitel's mind flayers are going to send you into its brain. <laughs> and that's where you have to sever its connection to the light and Sabathun. Have fun. Good luck. And it's like, okay, cool. Great. I'm going into a hive brain. This is creepy. Um, <laughs> the hive mind, so to speak. The, yeah. The hive mind. Right? You're not far off. Um, <laughs> but as an activity, as a seasonal activity, as something we are going to be doing week in, week out uh, until the end of the season, it is very strong. I agree. Uh, it's great content. Um, I'm never, I'm never mad. Like, oh man, I got to do that. I don't want to do that. Like I, I was kind of like that with some of the previous expansions, seasonal activities, um, where I didn't really like do them too much until like, oh, the season's wrapping up. I better <laughs> power through these. Um, but yeah, PsyOps is, is fantastic. Uh, now this next topic, I don't have any experience with yet because I was waiting for them to fix the weapon drop issues. Mm -hmm. um, but we also have the Wellspring activity. I uh, I am equally as in the dark on this. I uh, only just recently... I haven't accessed it yet. So, um, one day. Yeah, um, <laughs> I know that... I, I believe that the patch happened yesterday for the drop rates or is happening on Tuesday. I forget exactly. Um, but there was some complaints from some of the players that, hey, Wellspring is not dropping deep sight resonance weapons as often as it should, which is, you know, even a little bit. Yeah, that's no bueno. Uh, it is no bueno, especially when you have quests that require you to craft those weapons and you need them to drop to extract the plans to craft them. Yeah. Um, so just uh, Bungie did come out and say, hey, we're gonna take a look at this. We're gonna we're gonna you're right. These aren't the drop rates where they should be. We're gonna fix that up in a patch. Um, so I do know that it is a activity that rotates daily and it's a combination attack and defend. Like one day it'll be an attack, one day it'll be a defend, and you have to attack or defend a point from um, enemies. Kind of like, a, I guess it's like a horde mode almost. That's interesting. Um, which does sound pretty cool. I'm all yeah. for it. I just, like I said, I haven't picked it up yet just because I was waiting for those weapon drop rates to, to come back up. But uh, maybe tonight I'll hop on and check that out with my fire team. Oh, yeah. um, but speaking of content, um, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the older content that got shuffled into the former strike playlist which is now just called the vanguard ops playlist yeah um lee what do you think about that um it's actually i think it's a little more fitting because uh battlegrounds were essentially mini strikes in and of themselves so to kind of fold them over into the strike playlist it it definitely feels more fitting because it allows a uh, more variety when you're running those strikes so you're not just oh well here i go running gunning again all of a sudden, it's like, ooh, I get to do, uh, I get to fight some cabal and stuff. So, yeah, um, I was kind of taken by surprise because they, I don't remember reading about that in the like um, patch notes for Witch Queen. So when it I was first a loaded bit, up the game, they talked about it. Um, I think it was a, it was a few months ago. It's been a little bit, but it was something that they said ahead of time that they were going to do. And I appreciate it because, like you said, it's great that they folded in now this this older content that maybe some people who didn't play those previous seasons, you know, missed out on. Now they get a chance to check those activities out. And yeah, adding in the battlegrounds, um, I remember it took me by surprise because I was I was like, oh, I'll go do strikes. Totally didn't even see that it said Vanguard Ops playlist. I was like, <laughs> yeah, the strike the Vanguard Strike playlist. I'll hop into that and do my strikes and get my weekly engram. And uh, then they, uh, you know, the second one in the rotation was the the one in the Cosmodrome. Yes. And I was like, it's like, wait a minute, this is a battleground. This isn't a strike. What's going on here? <laughs> and then I backed out and read it. And I was like, oh, they changed it. Okay, cool. Yeah, I was just, I was in the dark. Just whoop. And a lot of that's more relevant than, uh, say, the, uh, the arms dealer strike. Mm -hmm. where you hear Cade all throughout and most of these newer players they came in after Cade died rest in peace 
so they don't know who he is. It hurts my soul. I've heard stories of new lights being like, hey, who's this Cade? Why is he on comms? And I'm like, oh, oh my heart. Your heart. I don't know oh, how to tell you this. My sweet summer new light. <laughs> um, yeah. Now, my question is this. I, I've only experienced Battlegrounds. Have they mentioned anything about adding in other seasonal activities as well? Um, I not yet. At okay. least I don't know if uh, that's something on the horizon. Uh, most of that was kind of a it was kind of a passing thing where they mentioned that battlegrounds will be folded in, but anything new was not meant or anything like beyond battlegrounds that happened in the seasonal contents. Okay, nothing was said because I was hoping for the um, the stuff we were doing with Mithrax where we're we're going into the Hive network. That was oh yeah, the the whole hacker hacker stuff that was that was fun. I I loved that activity. I played the hell out of that seasonal activity. <laughs> Um, so we're going to move on quickly to another new, uh, uh, interesting thing. Weapon crafting has been added to destiny Two. Um, Lee, what was your experience with weapon crafting for the first um, time? It's, it's kind of rudimentary in a sense. Like if you've played other MMOs and you've done what that have included weapon crafting, crafting, it's, it's very simple. It could definitely use some more expansion, but it's, to the point, which is good for uh, people who aren't familiar with that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. and, um, yeah, I was going to say, it's not very bloated. It, it's pretty streamlined. And I mean, you're able to pick, to an extent, pick what perks you want. Of course, you've got to use that weapon, uh, level it up, get more materials. But um, once you've used it enough, of course, you're able to get uh, certain perks for it that would fit your style. And I mean, it's it gives that concept of nothing worthwhile goes without effort. Mm -hmm. Very so much so. I, I like that. Yeah. Um, and with this weapon crafting, of course, we get the new weapon type of the glaive. Mm. Um, I just got to say, I love the glaive. It's great. Not in legendary. <laughs> <laughs> legendary, it's a little slow. There's a legendary. slow reload. Um, you've got a very minimal magazine on it, uh, depending on the perks you pick when you're crafting it. And being a titan, and I'm more of the ya in your face, right up, and then kind of bounce back. It's one thing when you're in their face, jab, and it does nothing, and you get socked, and you're dead. It's there's it's, something one-sided about this it's a little rough um <laughs> i do like though that one of these seasonal um mods that we got was for suppression on the glaive yes um, i really enjoy that however found out today um that bungie seems to have disabled it for some reason now i know that tomorrow is the race for the world's first raid um, yeah tomorrow's raid day and, and they've they've disabled a slew of things uh they have in. mentioned it, yeah. The Icolos SMG, uh, a number of other things, and so there's been some some fan speculation that they're like, oh well, maybe they just maybe they just you know turned it off a day early for some reason. Maybe they just jumped the gun. Um, but then there are other people saying that no, it has something to do with some mechanic with hunters, uh... where hunters are getting some kind of extra thing they shouldn't be getting. Um, so I don't know what the actual issue is, but as of right now, the mod has been disabled uh, as of the time of this recording. Hopefully by the time this goes up, it'll it'll be reinstated because nothing brought me more pleasure than coming up to a hive guardian and it's charging up its super and I just go, <laughs> no, no, no super for you. See, um, you like it. I, I really do like the the uh, the glaive. Uh, it's got great range. I was very surprised by the range on the blast. It does. It's uh and it's like uh it it doesn't pack as much punch as say like a an ex like a heavy weapon, but it definitely you're it's easy to aim. Uh, I mean the rounds are a bit slow, but they're they're faster than a grenade launcher. I would say it's it's surprisingly powerful for a secondary weapon. Um, yeah. Like, I was pleasantly surprised by the damage output on it, and that's why I kept using it. I was like, oh, this is great. <laughs> I think I have mine up to, like, level 19 by now. Like, I'm, oh, I'm cool. close to really getting up there with it. So the next time I can afford to make one, I'm going to make one all out with as much of the crazy stuff as I can. Heck, yeah. 
go crazy um, with it. Absolutely. But of course, everyone knows the favorite part of Destiny 2 is those juicy, exotic weapons. And we're here today to talk a little bit about those awesome new exotics, uh, starting with the new exotic SMG, the Osteostriga. Oh, yes. It, it, have you got your Osteostriga, Lee? I have not. Uh, I okay. still need to pick it up, but it's it's beautiful. Just the, the design is amazing. The design is so fun with the hive chitin all over it. Yes. And it's pretty good. It's it's really great at ad clearing. Um, I have used mine a few times. And just the way that the poison spreads as you're firing these these large poison pellets, basically. So it's kind of um, like an SMG version of Thorn. Exactly. And Thorn is one of my favorite exotics. So... <laughs> They said, here's Thorn, but faster. And I went, ooh, yes, please. <laughs> yes, please. Um, the thing I do want to get my hands on, I, ironic choice of words there, uh, is the Warlock exotic that um, makes the poison spread faster. I think it's called Necrotic Grips. Oh, yes. Um, yes. And if I can get that going with the SMG, like that's a good combo to use because you're going to be just dealing poison all over the place. Oh, that's going to be a monster in PvP if they don't... Uh... Yeah, I'd, I'd give it maybe another week or so if they haven't done anything about it yet. I'm not sure. I'm not even sure if Osteostria is in the PvP meta. Right? I stay away from PvP because I get too competitive, and when I'm losing, I just turn into a rage monster. So I'm like, oh, step, <laughs> step away. No, no PvP for Zach. Yeah, no, I'm. I am definitely not talented enough to do well in PvP. So there, there are times when I hear about people who are just like, yeah, you know, I went, I went, you know, twenty and and one, and I'm like, oh, cool. I went one in twenty. I was the guy you were against. <laughs> yeah um, that's that's pretty much it uh, but the so, other uh the the seasonal exotic on the season pass uh is the grand overture heavy machine gun this was an interesting because i'm uh i'm big on cabal themed loot so seeing this uh it's it's hefty and it I'm glad that it doesn't like it's not a pepper box. It doesn't just everywhere. No, yeah. it's it's got a nice kachunk. I was just gonna say that sound of the the kachunk as you're firing <laughs> is very satisfying. Yes, and I mean you, it wouldn't be a cabal weapon if it didn't have that heavy sound. Mm -hmm. So it's now I have to choose between the Skyburner's Oath and Grand Overture. I was just gonna say, man, Skyburner's Oath was a great exotic oh. back in the day when it first came out. Like, oh, oh that was I, so much fun to I wield. still use it on occasion. I swore by that weapon on the, for the first like two years of the game. <laughs> You're right with the Cabal theme stuff, man. The Cabal have really cool themed yeah. weaponry, and and like that's why I love that the seasonal armor this season is all Cabal Scion themed. Oh yes, and now I'm. Don't get me wrong, the Cabal themed like the armor and stuff that we got early on from like the Leviathan. Uh, uh, some of the other things, this is probably the closest to what I like, but I'm still waiting for like some like Legionnaire themed gear, just some nice hefty soldier armor. Just come on, Bungie, please give Lee that big old mohawk helmet. Yeah, Let's do it. Exactly. I'm just like, I, I mean, if you look at my Titan build, you will see that I am just a, I'm a thick boy, just, just really thick, heavy shoulders, big old chassis and everything that's just what i do cabal fits that entire style very well just 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 come on like next <laughs> season season after some sometime <laughs> would be cool would be cool uh see i'm i'm a uh i'm a warlock uh who is an awoken female so she's very lithe she's very <laughs> you know uh and the armor that i get uh for the season is Awesome. All Cabal themed again. We, we mentioned that. The helmet makes her look like an Oni. Yes. Where she's got like these tusks and like the center eye. And I'm just like, this could be like a Japanese Oni mask the way yes. this aesthetic looks. And it works so well too. And I mean, you put, um, I think I saw your build and it had like the, you made the helmet red. Yeah. Was red, it red? red? Yeah. Yeah. I'm using uh, the Crucible Metallic Shader. <clears throat> yes. And it and it does. It has that really like Edo period style, like that feel to it. And it's, it's so it's cool perfect. looking. I love it. I love it. <laughs> and see, normally, like my go-to shader is normally um, 
oh gosh, I'm forgetting the name of it now. Uh, the blue and black metropolitan something or other. Yes, um, um, something like that. I forget the name of it now. Like I used to, I used to be my go-to because blue is my favorite color, and that was a really good color of blue. And the texture like is black, nice dark navy too, blue. Yeah. yeah, and I was like, that's a good color. And then I, I was cycling through, and, and I was like, I was like, oh, I'll try changing up my color a bit for this. And I had gone to um, the purple, like celestial armor from a couple of seasons ago. Right. I was rocking that for a little while. I was like, oh, looks good. Okay, okay. And then when this new armor came out, and I was like, oh. Oh yeah, I like this. Oh, I like this, but I don't like the color. Let's change the color. And I was just kind of cycling through all my shadows. I was like, nah, nah, that one's got a lot of yellow. And eh, I'm not a big fan. Blah blah blah. Keep going through. And I landed on Crucible Metallic, and it was that red with a textured black. And I was like, perfect. Like, we're, it, we're done here. This we're is done. amazing. <laughs> um, one last exotic to talk about. Probably my new favorite. This is this is supplanting Gallerhorn to me. <laughs> I, I am a sucker for Gallerhorn. Gallerhorn yeah. did some some pretty damn fine damage output, but the new exotic heavy grenade launcher, Parasite. Oh man, <laughs> Lee, your thoughts? This uh, it's uh, anything that shoots live, literal, literally live rounds is uh, I just I I'm off. Oh, I don't have words. I don't have the right words to even explain how i feel about this gun it's just the sheer amount of uproar that this weapon made in the community either for or against <laughs> just added to the draw of this weapon and to be able to sit there and just see just thing and <laughs> the um what weapon was that a while back it was the grenade launcher that shot like the little nanites and stuff. Uh, the colony. Yes. It's uh, the colony can't even touch this weapon. Colony is good if you're doing void build, I think with that yeah. volatile flow, but stuff they're like, like the, the spreading uh, nanites and stuff to, uh, to close enemies and whatnot. That This is just, I mean, you're shooting literal worms at people. You can't, you this, can't get any better than that. This is such a fun, the, the mission to get this exotic is a lot of fun. First of all, because you have Marasov who says, Hey, we can learn a lot of secrets from Savathun's worm. You just have to resurrect it. You have to bring it back to life because it's right now it's kind of in a calcified, petrified state. Right. Um, and so you do this mission. The mission's kind of a pain in the ass. Uh, I'm not going to lie. You have to run this worm holding it the whole time. You don't have access to your weapons. You have to hold this worm and you have to run through these hive energy checkpoints while just waves and waves of hive are coming at you and, it's, and just, oh. it's rough because you're also avoiding obstacles in the map because there are things like oh here's a spinning death bat on the floor and you have to jump exactly into the puddles of it hive energy to avoid getting one shot by this thing it took me a good two three tries even on normal difficulty because i was like oh man this is really hard and that's um, that's not even including the commentary yeah, because the whole time you have this worm talking at you, being like, I thought you were better than this, Guardian. Come on. And you're like, shut up. You're a worm. <laughs> um, but you do that, and and the worm seems to think that Marasov, and we, we're, we're led to believe that Marasov is going to take on this worm as its host. And she's like, nope, fooled you. You're going to be a gun now. And <laughs> in classic <laughs> Destiny fashion, we have once again turned our enemy into a gun for a meme. It's what we do. It's what we do. And um, yeah, the, the the damage output on Parasite is ridiculous. Um, it has that perk where anytime you deal damage with another weapon or you take damage, I found out that's a new thing. Also, you, if you take damage, it stacks it as well. Um, you get a stack of a buff. I forget what the buff is called. Something like Worm's Hunger or something like that. Um, then you switch to your grenade launcher. Your grenade does more damage per stack of that buff. Oh. And that is why we're getting video and screenshots of people just absolutely melting bosses with this thing. This is an absolute game changer where you're rolling in and you're just like, okay, let me get the uh, bow, one shot, bow, two shot, bow, three shot. Okay, boss is dead. We won. <laughs> and it's like, how, what the hell happened? I love it. I want it. And I and I, when I found that out, I said, okay, I got to bear down and get through this mission because I need this grenade launcher. It's super powerful. 
and it makes me wonder how the how it's going to play into the uh, into the raid, if uh, if anyone's going yeah. to use it. I mean, I, I, I would think it has to be like a requirement for the raid if it does the because it does way more damage than than Gallerhorn if you have the right stacks of that buff. Right. So, so I, if you've got the right I, build, I think if you have the right build, uh, it's going to be one of those like you know back in the day people were saying like, oh, you don't have Gallerhorn, no, you can't do the raid. It's like, I was I, I talking with someone about LFG. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Destiny fandom. Gotta love it. Oh, yes. Um, the, the interesting bit of trivia I did want to bring up, because I found this out. It made me laugh like an idiot. <laughs> the sound effect of the worm. Anytime you reload or you fire the worm and it explodes. Uh, this was in... I want to check out who this interview was with. Because uh, I know it was... An in- interview done by GameSpot. Uh, yes. Oh, let's see here. Uh, I want to find the name of the, the person. Um, audio lead Evan Bueller. Bueller. Uh, he revealed Bueller. He revealed that the sound effects used for the worm is a pot of beef macaroni and cheese. <laughs> So that gross, squelching, wet noise you hear anytime the worm fires or you reload is just them stirring a big old pot of macaroni and cheese. With beef. Uh, I love it. I love it so much. It is the kind of goofy trivia that just makes me smile. And this is the kind of thing that if you're if you're, if you're into like sound design and whatnot, this is absolutely ingenious because then it's like, what is probably the wettest nastiest sounding thing that you can think of. <laughs> it's so good. With a can of beef. Like beef. I like to imagine that like they were tr- they were struggling. They were like, man, what are we going to do for the sound on this? I don't, I just don't know. I, how are we going to this out? And some dude walked in with a bowl and just like, hey, what you guys doing? <laughs> <laughs> they like, just that like is bring how that, that over went here. in my mind. Yeah. What are you waiting? Bring that over here. Come on, I got to hear. Do it into the mic. <laughs> so oh there's um, cheese on the boom <laughs> <laughs> there's cheese on the windsock oh, oh no oh oh I have too much fun but we're gonna give it our overall impressions now uh lee your overall impression of witch queen what do this you think? is the most fun that i've had with the destiny expansion in a long time and it's that's not just from a gameplay standpoint. It's from a, a lore standpoint, from a visual standpoint, audio. It is it is the whole package, and we have not had that in a long time. Yeah, um, I mean, God, we could go on for another like four <laughs> hours about the lore uh, because the <laughs> alone. lore alone in this game is insane. Um, there are so many YouTubers who have made a whole career out of uh, the lore of this game, who we we love and appreciate. And yeah, it's 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 fantastic. Yeah, this this expansion definitely reinvigorated the game for me. Um, the seasonal content is fun. The the story quest is a ton of fun. Really cool, dealing with unique themes. Um, the weapons are are just super satisfying. I didn't oh, even nice. mention I picked up a um, primary ex- uh, primary uh, auto rifle that is a stasis damage auto rifle in the primary yes. slot. Uh, the crate is what it's called. Yes. That's, oh, that's my new favorite gun. Like it's got a I, nice sound to it too. It does. It's so satisfying. I took my, my seventh serif carbine that I had been using. And I was like, you were fun for a little while, buddy, but I got to put you aside now. Cause we got the crate and it's awesome. <laughs> um, but yeah, just everything about this game, you know, there have been stumbling pl- blocks. Absolutely. There have been of times course. where the content was dry, where there wasn't really anything coming out for it. And it looked a little haggard. Um, but with this expansion, and I think even with um, Beyond Light and the seasonal content that came out with Beyond Light, Bungie really found their stride. And they, they know exactly what to push out in terms of content. I mean, after seven years, they've kind of... Um, it's not just the time that they put into it, but the, um, the changes in... Uh, uh, companies that they've gone through just all all the changes that the company itself has grown from with activision uh going with now they're with sony after being on their own for so long and 
I can only see it if if not staying where it is, definitely going up from here. Mm -hmm. As we I'm go into um well this year and into next with uh what is it, lightfall. Lightfall. The the one bit of, of lightfall that uh news that I do want to share on this before we depart um is they did announce that the same campaign lead who worked on Witch Queen has been carried over and is also going to be working on Lightfall as well. So I think we're in for a treat, definitely, because yes. agreed with On Every Point Man, Witch Queen has just been fantastic. And I think that Bungie is putting out that quality content that is going to just get better with time. Uh, and hopefully, you know, with these, these new seasons that come out this year, we'll be equally enthralled with the seasonal content. Um, but that's kind of it for our little Destiny 2 Witch Queen uh, chat uh, Lee, let the good people know where they can find you online. Uh, definitely mostly on Twitter at Pirate Monkey. That's uh, pirate, That's monkey with an I-E, not an E-Y. Uh, yeah, you'll find the wrong person. So, <laughs> But uh, I'm mostly there. So you, I've got the same thing on TikTok if you want to look at my antics there. So. Sure thing. Uh, and you can find me on Twitter at HollywoodZach. Um, that's where I kind of post all my inane ramblings. And of course, you can read our articles on and Cool. Uh, and we want to thank you guys for listening, tuning in, and we'll see you next time. Stay effing cool. If you like what you heard, please rate, review, and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Want to get in touch? Tweet us at effing cool, or you can email us at effing cool email at gmail.com. <laughs>